This video explains ZDU, or Zero Downtime Upgrade. ZDU is a wizard that guides administrators through the process of upgrading atomic automation to a higher version without impacting continuity. It means we upgrade the solution without stopping, hence the term Zero Downtime. The wizard moves through the sequence and blocks access to the next step unless the current one completed successfully. It involves loading upgraded data assets into the existing database, installing upgrade processes, starting those processes in the service manager, upgrading AWI, and a few more things. We have two modes that are activated sequentially. First, the compatibility mode, during which higher version processes are installed, while lower ones remain active. During this phase, you'll notice a substantial degrading of performance. When upgraded processes are ready to take over, it enters the parallel mode, where both versions coexist. This video is an overview of the process if you're discovering ZDU for the first time. It's not a user manual or a set of procedural instructions. ZDU has many moving parts, the versions that you're upgrading to and from, the database package and version, the compatibility matrix, the volume of operations, and many, many more. While this video will be very useful for a sandbox environment, it's in no way appropriate for production. If you're getting ready to upgrade your production environment, you should contact customer service and support teams to assist you. In this video, we upgrade from version 12.2 to 12.3 on Windows. The sequence is as follows. We start the wizard, atomic automation immediately enters the compatibility mode. New components are getting installed and there will be noticeable performance degradation. We install the 12.3 utilities and use dbload to load the 12.3 data into the existing database, in our case, SQL Server. We use the existing ODBC connection. We install the 12.3 automation engine and make adjustments to the ucsrv.ini file. We create 12.3 processes in Service Manager and update properties, so they point to the appropriate executables. This includes CP, WP, JCP, and JWP. We start the processes and they should stay on. If they don't, it means that we have configuration issues in either the Service Manager or UCSRV.ini. We install AWI 12.3, but we keep AWI 12.2 alive, at least until the procedure is complete. Finally, we test with a dummy job. Note a couple of things. First, we back up our 12.2 components. We don't delete them. Second, you can put your upgrade on hold if you need to. The wizard keeps track of your progress up to a certain point. If you log out after step two or step three and return to this at a later time, you'll be able to pick up where you left off. We start in client zero, which should always be used to perform a ZDU. We head to system upgrade and run the wizards. At the top, you see the sequence of steps to follow. The first step entails loading 12.3 data assets into the existing SQL Server database. We've organized the display with the current automation engine on the left and the 12.3.4 installation package on the right. We renamed the current utility directory, in our case version 12.2, and then installed the 12.3 utilities. We now have two utility directories, one for 12.2 and the other for 12.3. We have to configure the ODBC connection so that we can load our 12.3 data assets. For our purposes, we update the dbload INI file. Remember that you'll need to do this for all the other INIs. We're using SQL Server with Mars, which gets created with the automated one installer. We just add the line to the ODBC connection. Then we update the host, the connection, user ID, and passwords.
We copy the 12.3 DB directory to the new utility directory like we would for a standard installation. Then we run DB loads. The message indicates it's an upgrade. We move to the next step. The wizard tells us that 12.3 processes need to be installed and started. They will be inactive during the compatibility mode phase. We need the 12.2 processes to remain active. So this time we create an automation engine directory for the 12.3 processes and install AE there using the installation package. Here it's important to install the automation engine in the new directory. We have to update UCSRV.ini with a number of new settings. For example, we have to expand the number of ports the CP can connect to, since we're creating new communication processes. This is our CP port range, which covers four ports. We double that to 2226. We're not going to show every setting. Let's explain what they are instead. We have to update the ODBC connection settings so that the automation engine can connect to the database. This is a given. We also have to set up the JDBC connection specific to SQL Server. One important and somewhat unfamiliar change is the REST ports, which is currently used by the JCP. For the two JCPs to coexist, even temporarily, REST uses an open port. In our case, we'll change it to 8089. Remember that without a functioning JCP, you won't be able to log on. If you're using SQL Server, you have to copy the Microsoft JDBC driver to the bin slash lib directory of the new automation engine. Behind the scenes, we make these changes and proceed. Our next step is to start the processes we installed. For this, we use the service manager. We use an existing CP, WP, JWP, and JCP. Then we map our new processes to the assigned ucsrv.ini file using the new automation engine 123 directory. This is quite simple. These new processes are currently being invoked in the old automation engine directory with the old ucsrv.ini. We have to update all references to the new automation engine directory. You should have at least one instance of CP, WP, JWP, and JCP. These were created by duplicating old processes. Their properties should have been updated so that the new automation engine directory is referenced.
We have a new set of processes for version 12.3. We can start them. Remember that Service Manager's SMC file guarantees a slow and deliberate start of processes with inserted pauses. We should do the same here. We start with a CP and wait until it's connected. Then we move on to WP, then the JWP, then JCP at the end. We wait after each process to make sure that it starts and stays on. A process may start and then stop, which points to an issue, either in your Service Manager's properties or in the configuration of UCSRV.ini. You can check the AE temp directory for that. If processes stay started, you should be all set. Your log should take a standard format. If not, you'll see longer name extensions, which explain the errors. Issues could be the results of a number of things, like a REST port in use, or a process initiated in the old automation engine directory. The step is complete, we click Next. We're prompted to upgrade AWI. The system has to be configured so that interfaces for both versions can live on the same system. Let's install the 12.3 web interface. In our case, we're using Tomcat. The WAR file is found in the web apps directory. On the right, we have the 12.3 WAR file. It needs to have a different name, so we duplicate it and then copy it to the web apps directory of Tomcat. We'll wait a few seconds for Tomcat to deploy the new AWI package dynamically. The new AWI package is deployed. We need to configure uc4config.xml. AWI needs to connect to a live CP. We installed and started a 12.3 CP, but it's still inactive as stated by the wizard initially. So AWI won't be able to connect to it in the current states. This being said, we'll need to connect to it soon, so we have to find out on what port the new CP was created. For this, we create a new 12.2 AWI connection and check the processes. We can see our new processes. They're identified by the version fields. Here we have a 12.3.4 CP connected to port 2219. Again, it's worth repeating that this process is not active, but it will be. When that happens, the 12.3 AWI will need to connect to it. So we use 2219 and add it to the uc4 config.xml file. This is where we indicate the CP ports. Back in the wizard, we confirmed that a web interface was upgraded. We click Next. Notice the message notification. Whenever these appear during this process, you should really check them. You're being notified that a system upgrade took place, your settings need to be saved, and you need to log out and back in. We do this. It's worth explaining that you're no longer operating in compatibility mode, but you're now in parallel. 
Both sets of processes are coexisting in the system. This is the next step. Agents and users need to be connected to the new automation engine. You also notice the rollback function. This allows you to roll back the entire procedure and restore 12.2. This being said, the data structures you uploaded to the database will remain. You see all your agents reconnecting. You might have to give it a few minutes depending on the number of agents. The wizard informs you that users need to be disconnected and reconnected to the new interface. This is the last step before the 12.2 AWI becomes unusable and you're committing to version 12.3. You've been disconnected from AWI. You can pick up the upgrade wizard in AWI version 12.3. To connect to AWI, we simply use the new URL name. Your agents and users were moved to the new version. We can check this. You receive instructions for continuous delivery automation, which in AE 12.2 was still called Atomic Release Automation, or ARA. This requires additional steps which are out of scope. At this point, you should install plugins. For example, Analytics is affected, in which case you'll have to copy the appropriate JAR files. For Analytics, this JAR file is found in the installation package under Analytics UI Plugin. It has to be copied to the AWI Web Apps directory under Web INF Auto Install. You'll need to set the API key of the plugin properties and do the things that are required for analytics to work. This is out of scope, but we recommend following the process outlined in our other videos covering analytics. If you have memory entries, delete them now. Agents need to be updated separately and Atomic offers a function called Centralized Agent Upgrade or CAU. This is out of scope, but we recommend following the process outlined in videos addressing CAU. You upgrade completed, you can close. Remember to update your service manager. Use the SMD file to remove the old processes at startup and the SMC file to automate the starting of the processes themselves.